In this section, we're going to be talking about performance improvement. Now, while the administrator may not be directly responsible for performance improvement, typically that's going to fall to the clinical supervisors or clinical PI committee type people. The administrator still does hold ultimate responsibility for PI programs, especially those PI programs that touch the entire institution. Hence, the administrator needs to have a strong working knowledge of the performance improvement process, how it works, um, how benchmarking is done, who's responsible for it, and what expected outcomes may result from a performance improvement program. Let's talk a little bit about objectivity. We, we discussed this briefly during the orientation, but I wanted to hit on it again. It is extremely important that anyone doing performance improvement has an objective perspective. Now, as we discussed, most people think they're objective, but most people have bias that colors anything they do. And when we're doing performance improvement, it is very important that we go by the numbers. We have to gather data objectively, and we have to evaluate that data as is, without tainting it with any type of bias or a lack of objectivity. Now much of what's done in healthcare, believe it or not, is still not evidence-based. Uh, we're stu still doing a lot of treatments that are just based on anecdotal evidence. Now anecdotal evidence is, is better than nothing, but what anecdotal evidence is, is you did something, you saw a result, so your assumption is that you're going to get that same result with all patients. And we know that that assumption is flawed. We know that we have to have blinded studies, double-blinded studies set up and done to really know what treatments do to across groups of people. So as we go through this section, I want you to pay particular attention to this need to be objective. I want you to become accustomed to looking at numbers, interpreting those numbers as they are written, without allowing any of your background or experience or opinion to affect what you see. This is very important and will remain important as we go through the rest of the program. When we talk about performance improvement, we're generally talking about one of three areas. And these areas do have some overlap. But the first area is going to be patient care. And the goal there is to determine the quality of patient care as it relates to national, states, or local standards. The second area is going to be patient safety. And patient safety may sound odd to be looking at, but when you consider the incidence of medical errors that occur in hospitals, this has to be a big priority and a huge part of a performance improvement program. Uh, some national statistics indicate that drug errors for hospitalized patients exceed 20 percent. That means greater than one out of five patients admitted to a hospital will receive a wrong drug, a wrong dose, a wrong route, or a wrong something. And occasionally those errors are serious. You know, they can result in an overdose, they can result in a patient not receiving a needed treatment, or worst case, the patient gets a drug that's not even indicated for their condition. Uh, the third category, patient satisfaction, is one that doesn't really have much of a clinical impact. We talked about this a little bit in the other class, but patient satisfaction is so subjective that it basically refers to how well a patient was treated interpersonally and has very little to do with the quality of care that was provided. However, it still is very important. Uh, it, from an administrative point of view, if you don't have satisfied patients, you're probably not going to have patients. So it becomes important from a customer satisfaction, uh, word of mouth, uh, patient comes back again to the same facility type perspective. And we talked about this in the introductory course, the uh, MHA 600 course. But since we're talking about performance improvement, it does bear repeating here. Again, objectivity is a must. So when we're looking at levels of evidence, we have to know enough about the types of studies or the sources of the data to know whether it is valid or not. 
and I'm not going to go through all the levels here. You can review that, that from the other course, but just to kind of highlight, anecdotal evidence is what you see. It is not very reliable. We know that now after doing, having done double blind studies for the last 30 or 40 years that anecdotal evidence is better than nothing, but it's only slightly better than nothing. There's so much difference from one patient to the next that just because something works in one patient is really no indicator that it will work in another patient, even a similar patient. So we have to keep in mind that studies have to be done objectively, uh, preferably they have to be blinded studies, and ideally they need to be double blinded studies where neither the patient or the researcher knows whether the patient is getting the actual treatment or whether the patient is getting a placebo. And then at the end of the study, uh, the people who are doing the study can go back and pull up all the data. They take away the blinded part of it and they can actually see who got the treatment and what their response was and have a very objective uh, set of data from which to determine the efficacy of any given treatment. Benchmarks can be reference points or they can be goals. They are levels that we set, they're targets that we set to shoot for. And benchmarks are dynamic, they may change over time. Uh, when we're starting a new pro program especially, the benchmarks that we set early on may be completely at the wrong place. But we have to have a starting point, so we set a benchmark and we see if it's obtainable or not and then we adjust that benchmark to match expected performance beyond that point. Benchmarks can be used at a variety of levels. For example, we could set benchmarks for an individual department. We could set a benchmark across departments in a hospital. We could set a benchmark to look at hospitals in a state. And we can look at benchmarks for the entire nation, all hospitals in the United States, for example. Um, but in any case, they're all, they all serve the same purpose. They are a target or a relative performance level that gives us an idea as to how we are doing in comparison to other units of the same type. I want to use a, a local example to help you better understand benchmarks. Mississippi recently became one of the very first states to set up a statewide STEMI system. And STEMI, S-T-E-M-I, stands for ST Elevation Myocardial Infarction. It is a technical term for a heart attack. And the Heart Association, the American Heart Association, has been very active and very effective at establishing national guidelines for the management of STEMI patients. And Mississippi now has uh, a, it's called the Mississippi Healthcare Alliance, which gathers data from all participating hospitals, which are almost all the hospitals in the state, to report how they are performing in the management of STEMI patients compared to these national benchmarks or these national standards. Uh, for example, some of the standards are door to needle time and door to cath lab time. Uh, now what that means is patients who have a quicker door to needle time are arrival to treatment time generally have better outcomes than those who have longer times. Similarly, patients who have shorter door to cath lab times have blood flow restored to their heart quicker and also will have better long-term outcomes or prognoses. So what we can do now is since every hospital in the state is reporting this data, at the Mississippi Healthcare Alliance level we can gather that data and we can look at it and we can look for outliers, good and bad. For example, if there is a hospital that is exceeding the guidelines, then we can look at that hospital as a model and we can try to copy their practices and export those practices to other hospitals to help them do better. Similarly, if we have hospitals that are not doing well, that are not meeting these guidelines, we can try to help that hospital find the reasons why 
they're not able to meet these guidelines and we can help them in the same way. So benchmarks can help from looking at those who exceed the benchmark and also by looking at those that fall below the benchmark. But the goal is to have all participating hospitals at or above the benchmark in this case, which is the national guideline established by the American Heart Association. On this slide, you'll see the results for a simulated survey of our hospital. What we're doing is we're comparing our hospital to other hospitals nationally. And this would be data gathered over some period of time, perhaps a quarter, maybe a year, uh, usually at least a quarter, though, to have meaningful data. And you can see here that the items in black are where we had a higher score than the national average. The items in red, we didn't do quite as well as the national average. We didn't meet the standard. So using our example from uh, the previous slide, we're going to use the items in red to improve. We're going to look at the other hospitals that did better than us in those areas. We're going to see what they did that allowed them to do better, and we're going to copy some of their practices. We're going to introduce some of those practices to our employees. In the areas where we exceeded the national average, in reality, we would probably just let those stand. But what we should be doing is we should be trying to improve on those as well. In this scale, a 100 would be the ideal score. And we're not out of the 80s in any category. So we've got a long, uh, a long ways to go to attain a perfect score. And that's going to be our goal. Even though we met the national standard, we're still going to be pushing to increase our scores even more. One thing that you have to be aware of is that these numbers can change over time. For example, in this case, we're comparing our hospital to the national average. Well, the national average will vary. It may go up, it may go down. So it's a moving target, and we don't know exactly what it's going to be until the data comes out at the end of a given period of time. So instead of trying to shoot for a national average, we should be shooting for that 100 mark, that perfect score. And that way, we're always shooting above the level that we hope to achieve. 